Okay, it is nine o'clock. Let's start the meeting. Uh, this is Susie Drish, and I'd like to welcome everybody to our meeting. Uh, comments at first. Connor has been here two years in our community. We're still standing. Yeah, and not been arrested. That is yeah, I know, all right. And and the other thing Thanks is Steve it. Smith has promised us it's gonna be in the 70s, low 80s this week. Okay. So we're gonna hold you to that. <laughs> this weekend it might get hot though, so be careful. <laughs> yeah, it will, it will get hot. Anyway, uh public comment. Any public comment? Any public comment? Any public comment? Moving on. Pardon? I'm just happy to be here. Okay, that's, I'm glad you okay. Anyway, um, I'd like to, a motion to acknowledge the minutes from August the 7th, the 8th, and the 11th. So moved by Dimmitt, seconded by Susie. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Yay, we got by that. We're going to move on to meet with our county engineer who has a whole lot to talk about today. Good morning, supervisors. We have construction crews in the county. Yay. L.O. Pelling is placing rock and grading on 146 from Germanville Road to the county line, uh, east county line. Okay, so it's about three and a half miles. Uh, they'll be getting the crown touched up and then when they get done with that, hopefully, They'll be ready to start shooting oil and chips on that. Um, Manats is moving in Thursday on Nutmeg to start the cement stabilization. So we'll go from Nutmeg, get that done, and then go over to Larch, stabilize that. Those roads will both be closed to through traffic. During construction, we will have flaggers out there to help direct people around um, and let them through across 200 if it's passable. Um, the odds are, the odds are people should find another way around, but if, if we can let them through, we will. Um, there will be times it won't be passable. There will be times on Larch or North B Avenue, a city residents call it, that people will not be able to use that route. When Manats or when Pelling's done at 146, they should be timed right to hit Nutmeg and Larch. So we'll try and get those two buttoned up as quick as we can so they're open to traffic. And then, of course, we've got Brookville Road, Juniper, and we're also doing 185th and Jab along Vedic City. So how are you doing? That's that's what we got. What's the end on all these? And the end time uh, Probably three weeks. Plus, then plus Mother Nature throws sure. a curveball at us. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a fairly quick process. We'll be a little inconvenient, but then they'll be done and out of the way. Um, later in the agenda, you've got a couple of grant applications yeah. to sign off on, um, I don't know if to talk about those now or when they come up for the consideration. What would you like to do? I really don't care. We've got one for temporary traffic signals to replace flaggers for when we're doing patchwork or total patching or basically anything where we're gonna have a lane closure. Mm -hmm. uh, the DOT is, has been very generous with grant money for that application uh, they they value that as a safety feature so pretty much any county that asks for them can get them so we're going to go ahead and ask for them because that frees up two employees and no more than we have anything we can do to save manpower and have them able to do something else we'll do then the other grant application is for safety money for some of the improvements on one tenth to help towards our local match should we get that grant. So that's not a done deal yet? Not, not until it gets through appropriations. Okay. Um, How much will our match be on that? 
20%. So we're going to have about a $600,000 match, which we can do with FM fund. But if we can get this traffic safety improvement TSIP grant, that's going to take care of about 300,000 of it or 260, somewhere in that window. It's can't do all of it, but at least it takes a chunk out of out of the bite. Um, let's see. Then we've also got crews working up on Iris, getting that ready for our bridge project. Mm -hmm. The bridge will get delivered mid September. We've got a little bit of time, but they're working on digging out the footings and building back up mechanically or geos. Geo reinforced earthen wall, which will be the foundation for our bridge. So, if we go back to some of the things, and thanks for talking, this is some things that are doing. Set public hearing for upgrading Palm Boulevard from level B to level A. Do you know the time frame for that, Abby? Four and 20. What, pardon me? Four and 20. Mm -hmm. So we can do that twenty eighth. Right, we should be able to do that. Okay. And okay. make a motion that we have that public hearing on August twenty eighth at nine eight. Okay. It's been a motion. I second that. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much. Next item is to set public hearing for upgrading 110th Street from level B to level A. And we need a public hearing on that. Could we do that the same day, like 15 minutes later? Okay. I'll make a motion to do that one at 9.15 on August 20th. Second. Okay. There's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Thank you very much. The next one, discuss, consider application for state, for grants for state of Iowa TSIP funds for portable traffic signals. I make a motion to approve that resolution. Dimit makes a motion, seconded by Sanquist. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passed, thank you very much. The next item is discuss and consider application for grants for state of Iowa TSIP funds for two foot shoulders on one tenth. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Same Aye. Time. Same Sorry. Time. It's okay. Yeah, I um, made some additions to that before. So this will actually be the form that I'll submit. You want this sign, right? I don't need another copy of those. Dwayne, what is this? That's the actual grant application for, for one tenth. For one tenth. Okay. So, do we have any Yeah, that's the that's the one tenth. Um, I don't know how many copies you guys need. Oh, Okay. Yeah, so I, I might just need one that I can scan after Scott signs it so I can submit it, but I do need to submit them this afternoon. Okay. So, do you need this one signed? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to skip down to. Um, Bart, you want to come up here? I'm going to get you back on the job. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry's the only one that brings donuts. Um, discuss and consider resolution. Jersey County Sheriff's Office to hire Sheriff Brendan Lunsford. Yes, uh, Brendan couldn't make it today. He's in the training. Happened to have him fall right at nine o'clock today. Um, it's required. Uh, we hired Brendan and I wanted to bring him in and introduce him, but um, he's a resident of Jefferson County, grew up here, graduated Fairfield High School, 
has a degree from Iowa Wesleyan in criminal justice. He has parents here, grandparents here that live in the county. Um, he's a single guy, so young. So he's going to be attending the Iowa law enforcement classes. Brendan was a pretty good in high school sports. Real good wrestler, yes. Yeah. Yes. You can beat Tyler Linda Bomb once. Really? Yes. Um, so. I move that we hire Brendan Lunsford as a new deputy. And I believe he's replacing um, Mr. Metcalf. Is that correct? Deputy Metcalf retired. Okay. Yes. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Congratu tell him congratulations. Well, the green donuts. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next one. Discuss and consider the resolution in Jefferson County Sheriff's Office to increase, to step increase, the salary of correctional officer Alexis Nance. 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 Sorry about that. Um, what, how, is this her? This is her one year uh -huh. going off probation. So this would increase her to the regular correctional officer pay. Sure. And this is the normal process. This, this is, I'll make a motion to approve this. I second that motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Now we're going to get the teaching superintendent back to work. <laughs> Would you like to come up here? Sure. Thanks for coming, by the way. Yeah. yeah no, thank you. you. Want to come on? No, no, sure. Appreciate it. <laughs> Let's see if I need to. At any rate, JJ's um, J. the school board president. Yes, he is. <laughs> It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, discussing consider the 20 year agreement with Pekin Community School District. Um, I had had a little conversation with Bart. Uh, yeah, I think about um, that. The current contract with uh, Officer Porn is, the, is, um, is still for another year, but you're wanting to take that to full time now instead of half time? Correct. Uh, the Beacon School Board and the Superintendent mm -hmm. want to increase that to full time. Um, and, and if she starts, I think, what did I read here? Start the school year to the end of the school year, and then she's just yours for the summer. Correct. Yeah. This this agreement would include the next two school years, like the first one did. Okay, so we'd, we'd be altering the 20 that we currently have right now, now going full time. Correct. Instead of correct. Okay. And the hourly rate reflects her benefits in it. Sure. Um, do you guys have any questions? Okay. How is Angie doing? Good. Good. So basically, it looks like the schools reimbursing the county, right? Mm -hmm. Do you get funding for this from the state? We, yeah, we do. So we get um, operational sharing. We okay. get to count oh, sure. um, two extra students for this. So okay. um, because that helps we'd us. We'd actually have a little tiny bit yeah. of print. Little tiny yeah. bit. Yeah, we, we, get, we understand what it is. Yeah, <laughs> we get we get to count two um, okay. currently. So. Definitely helps us, and just from a safety aspect of our location, right. having an officer there um, is is really beneficial. And there's just a different. It's kind of hard to describe it. When she was in the building, I know my high school principal said there's there's just a different feel um, mm -hmm. from students from staff when she was there. Mm -hmm. So um, that was really helpful, and just being able to be there full time and going to classes as more proactive is something she wasn't able to do as much as she would have liked. But um, she has a great relationship with students, mm -hmm. loves being like at lunch duty and going to play kickball and things with the kids and just building that relationship that um, police are good people uh, and just helping with some of the, the lessons in class would be really beneficial for us. So yeah, last year she was up to the contract reads up to 15 hours. Mm -hmm. And so there were times where she was 15, there were times where it was depending on our professional development schedule and her um, work schedule. She was was only there maybe eight hours, and so um, 
I think the biggest thing is we would work with uh, the police department, but she's still a Jefferson County Sheriff's deputy. So if there was an issue, I mean, that takes top priority. So it's not like we're saying, no, she's got to be at school at eight o'clock. I mean, if there's a situation and she's close, you know, take the call. Absolutely. And yeah. so we're pretty flexible with her, but just being able to increase that time would, would, uh, would be huge for, for Pekin. So I'm 150% in favor of this, but I do have a question. Um, and then maybe this is more for, well, it is for Mark, but I don't want if um, Chauncey wants to jump in on this. Um, it says not to exceed 60,000 for the 23, 24 school year. Um, so potential for pay raises exists there. So do we absorb those? Rather as, as far as as far as the current year? Well, you know, we'll start the budget process at the end of the, the end of this year. So based it's based off our current yeah. right, salary. So we as of July one. So any increase will absorb. Right. And there won't be another one until next year. Yeah, yeah basically um, 60,000 would exceed over 50% of her salary and benefit. So we're all good. Now. I mean, and it does include for the next school year too at the same yeah. rate, right. the same hourly rate. Yeah. But it, the hour, hourly rate was figured with FICA IPERS insurance all figured into that hourly rate. Okay. Uh, there's no, no more discussion. I would make a motion to approve this 28E between Pekin Community School and Jefferson County for a uh, full time resource officer. Oh, second. Second. I beat D. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you very much. You, you're the only signature we need to sign. Is it? Yeah. So we're going to it. You know, I don't know. <laughs> This time the last time you know. I know. We need the original. Okay. Doesn't matter which one is Or you want to just do that one? <laughs> I could do both. Okay. Give her one yeah, and then I'll take one back. How about that? Perfect. We start twenty third with kids uh, Friday with new staff, and then Monday with all staff. It's good so. to have kids. Have yeah, yeah, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> that helps. Then. Do you want? Did you get one, Bart? Yeah, sign this one. Yeah, okay. summer flew by, but mm -hmm. sure did. That's what we're in the business you want me for. To sign so that I hate winter. Oh, Just, Stephanie, you have my copy. I've only signed one. That's one. I don't know. <laughs> Everyone okay. said my name. I think so, Derek, did you have to hire me? I'll take this, this year. We have nine new staff yeah. coming yeah. in, yeah. Uh, yeah. which nine. was a lot less than last year. Yeah, I was going to so, ask you. Yeah, it was less than last year. And and everybody that we were, we recruited and got some, some new young teachers, got some veteran teachers that decided to come back and Nice. And so, yeah, we're, we're really excited for this year and, and all the staff that our administration is was new all last year. So we kind of went in blind. And so yeah. now we're You're doing a great job. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're 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 ready for the year. So we get a uh, conversation with JJ. We get our our wheels underneath us, so to speak, and mm -hmm. we're save a peak and some money. And, the ball games and stuff too. Sure, sure. So we, we would appreciate that because we spent uh, I want to say about four thousand dollars on ambulance services. Nice. That was which means now you can afford the hot chocolate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there's two two originals okay. there. Excuse me. Entrust them to Abby. I have a third original. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I thank appreciate you. appreciate it, guys. Appreciate no. I'm so happy to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna watch this one. I don't know. <laughs>
Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yes, thank you. See Appreciate you guys later. You. For, <laughs> thank you. Gary, thank yes, you. you bet. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. See you later. See ya. Oh, uh, we can go back to meet with NBA's director. Brian, you want to come up here? Good morning. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Good. How was your trip to Oklahoma? <sighs> Fast. Fast. Made it a uh, round trip in 24 hours. Uh, uh, that was like an hour drive, not counting gas and stuff. So. But I'm back. It's so brown down there. Well, it was brown here. Well, yeah. it's green. People are nice. Anyway, how are you? Good. I think we're good. We're here. Uh, yes. So it counts. Uh, it's a start. So uh, how are things in, in the end of this world? Well, uh, we're currently doing the onboarding with the billing company. With the, they have set up weekly meetings, the Zoom meetings, uh, from 1430 or 230 to 330 every week on Wednesday. It's, it's, a, it's a lot. There's a lot of paperwork we've got to be filling out, so it, that's ongoing. Uh, still working on protocols, uh, going through that many pages and making sure everything adds up is, is a lot. And uh, when you think you got it all done, you're like, oh, no, wait, it's going to, you know, everything's going to match and be in order and be fine. Uh, we are... Uh, Initially, we're going to do a, uh, a full pharmacy agreement with the hospital. That means that everything was going to be based with them. Narcotics and non-narcotics, meaning fentanyl, morphine, stuff like that. That's, that's your narcotics, okay, and your RSI drugs. Uh, as well as the non-narcotics, which includes your epi 1 to 10,000 and, and things like that. So everything was going to initially be based there. Well, uh, there's been some issues with the pharmacy and uh, about them saying they can't sell our non-narcotics. They got to have a special license and things like that. Well, are you talking about the the drug sharing? The with Katie that's correct. Stacey. Yeah, and and they kind of found this out last week. And so uh -huh. it's it's a little bit problematic, but in order to negate that due to the time factor, we're going to do a combination thereof, which means that our medical director will, will okay us having the non-narcotics at the ambulance base. They'll be locked up double locked and everything will be good with that. Uh, and we're going to buy these from, from Boundary and hopefully uh, Hopefully we can get some from the hospital as well. You know, uh, the hard narcotics such as your morphine and your fentanyl and things like that will be based at the hospital. And it's better that way is that we can keep positive control, <laughs> DEA, stuff like that. So uh, we're gonna meet again this week. Uh, we supposed to meet today at 1030, but uh, Due to some logistical issues with their staff, we're not able to do that. I mean, but we're going to get that figured out and uh, get that done. So, um, two vents, we got two vents that came in and uh, we're testing them out. We got to get a test line to make sure that everything is. is um, we got three monitors on, on its way. Uh, they'll be shipped out uh, later on this week. So uh, that'll be good. Get those in prior to um, you know being fully staffed by in September. This will enable people to train on these and sure. the medical director will be involved with that heavily as well to make sure everybody's uh, knowledgeable on uh, this stuff. Um, 
we're doing the hospital agreement. Uh, Chauncey gave me the draft yesterday. I looked through it. And it's perfect. So it's just a matter of uh, maybe your veteran hospital. Right. There comes up the plan. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, we have a long list of applicants, which is good. I got another interview today. Um, currently, we have 18 resumes. We interviewed 17. Uh, our interviews of people people we talk to uh, are from various counties, which is from Boone, Henry, Johnson, Louisa, Lee County, Jasper, and a couple of uh, people which live in Michigan, which will be interested in doing like a weekend package type thing. Oh. So it actually works out good because you don't want somebody just driving four or five hours to do a 12 hour, 24 hour shift. It's better to do it in one block. And it, it, it's good because it, it fills the slot and they're, they're medics and we need medics. Um, we also uh, interviewed two local firefighters. Um, for EMT positions, so and and that's a bonus to keep a lot local and and keep that um, relationship going. Um, currently, we're going to make offers to eight medics and nine EMTs. Hopefully, nine medics today at uh, three thirty. So, um, and we need to we need to stagger these hires. We don't want to overload. Uh, the hospital with getting people in all at one time because they can't. Um, I've worked with Bart. Bart's, Bart's going to do our background stuff and it's free and we like free. So um, we want to stagger these individuals for, for uh, training. Some of these individuals have jobs. So we got to work around that a little bit. Um, so how many full time are you looking at? Six and six, okay. and it's important to have a couple of uh, three to four alternates, sure. part timers, yeah. in case somebody calls in sick or um, takes off or, or whatever. So I th I think we're well on our way, um, and the indie thing has worked out really good. As a matter of fact, I got another a couple more EMTs from Maharashi University and people like that. So um, our names get out there and it's a pause. Mm -hmm. um, all these individuals, of course, it takes time because we've got to upload them into the Amanda portal, everyone. We've got to go through um, their shot records, you know, get them with public health, make sure their TB and their, and their hepatitis B vaccines are all good. Um, getting them into the billing system, getting them trained. Uh, and the billing company also does a background check on each individual as far as like Medicare, Medicaid, and things like that. Make sure there's no issues <coughs> with that. Um, let's see. Uh, we're planning on having our staff orientation uh, in September. Uh, we got about three days that we're blocking off for the EVOC course, and that includes uh, the training with the medical director, having her come down, and uh, just making sure everybody's on the same page and uh, orient them to the protocols as well. And that's what we got to make sure they're perfect. And also, um, we're still working with Jack on policies and procedures. Uh, he hasn't sent me a draft yet. When he does, I'll, I'll present it to you, and that way everything's on the up and up. Um, we have various uh, medics being CCPs uh, as well, so they're bringing in a lot, and they're telling their friends, and they're coming out, which is which is really good. good. Wow. Probably know what CCP is. Uh, it's critical care paramedic, and. Um, I didn't, where I'm from, uh, we don't have CCPs, but when I moved up here, uh, the critical care paramedics, it allows them to run like vet patients, your higher level of um, critical uh, transfers, like especially from the hospital going to like the university or whatever, 
making sure that they have pick lines or, or stuff like that. And just it brings in uh, an added level of experience and training, if you will. And it also allows us to have that CCP um, credentialing, which... And you've applied for that in the license that, already. That yeah. is correct, yes, ma'am. And, uh, and that holds true. And talking to Jacob, he just wants to see that CCP on, on the... On, on the uh, on our staff, and we have, we will have to set it as well. Um, but everything is coming together, um, and as as we start reaching out to these individuals, I'll put them to the board. I think we're, we're planning on doing something next week too, as well. So I have a dumb question. Yes, just pretend I don't know anything. Shit. That's not the people. I wish I had it. Um, <laughs> I'm gone. Susie, you open, I'm sorry, you open that one up. Um, the people that you're hiring, yes. a lot of them have been to have some of these credentials already, correct? Because they're working in this capacity. That's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and uh, yes, they, they are working, they're working at other jobs in, mm -hmm. in the counties that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. But uh, as far as them coming on, mm -hmm. we just need to go through the steps. We've got to build packets for each individual. And we want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. You know, just different counties have different protocols, if you will. Sure. And uh, every medical director is different mm -hmm. because you're operating under their license. And so, you said your protocols are not quite done yet. You're still working on those? They, they are that we're still working on this and uh, it's it's a lot yeah <laughs> it's yeah. it's a lot because you know like like jacob has said you know what drugs we carry on the ambulance it has to match exactly what's in the protocols and and that goes mm -hmm. that covers the hospital because we have that or we will have that agreement. sure and that covers the medical director and it also uh, covers the medic, um, so it's it's yeah. uh, vital that it's important and done correctly. So I have another dumb question. I get three. This is my second one. Yes. The people that you're all in one day or bringing on, day? we need to solve that. <laughs> really anyway, the the people that you're bringing on, do you call their current employer to see how what's going on? Do you, Absolutely, absolutely. And then and Bart's going to chair the sheriff. Sheriff will check on. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, he will do the full background investigation on on them mm -hmm. as well, as far as making sure there's no uh, issues. With what the, issues could there be? I'm just curious. Um, assaults, uh, and things like that. Uh, it's various. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't want any abuse uh, or anything like right. our history there. Yeah. And well, you also don't you check? Um, I don't know what you call the it. License. Huh? The license they check that. Well, yes. yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that on um, I don't know. I suppose it's on the Iowa Department of Public Health website, but whether or not any of these individuals are under current investigation or whatever. Yes. Uh, with their, for their certification. And of course, yes. And through the Amanda portal, and okay. it's just putting the uh, the candidate's full name and date of birth in there. Uh, we can get back if they are truly licensed. So Amanda runs all it for you. Yes. Yeah, to a point, it runs, it makes sure that they're properly certified. And uh, we also go into the American Heart Association to verify, like, if they've got a heart. the ACL, <laughs> right. Uh, the Pediatric Advanced Life Support, it's just to verify everything and that they <laughs> they, they are who they say they are and they're, and they're certified as they claim. They yeah. Are. Do you do all this and look at the results before you offer a job? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it, it's important. And it's also important to say that, you know, when when you reach out to these individuals, it's all based upon you meet the, you meet the standards, you, you pass the protocol test, you pass the EVOC course, you, you pass background check, you pass what we have set up at the hospital, the drug test, the meeting with the provider, and also meeting with uh, 
do them doing the functionality test. We don't want somebody who has a previous injury coming on, hurting themselves more, and, and we don't want to open up questions for that. So neither do we. I agree. So um that's three. No, that was, that was two and a half because he interrupted me. So it Let's say now you've lost my train of thought. I, I didn't lose it. I never found it. I haven't either. So I was looking for it. I'm really, I'm really excited about the fact you've got people from all those counties. I am too. I really and if you hire an array of folks yes. from those counties, it makes me feel a little better. Okay. They'll probably bring a few people up. Yeah. Well, um, Word of mouth is is a powerful tool, you know. Whether good or bad, good, because we 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 want the best, yeah. and we we uh, this county deserves the best, and mm -hmm. and that's what yeah. we want to put out there on the charts. Yeah. Um, I do want to put in front of you guys. Um, we want to hire Damian Wimmer, and the reason why is. Uh, He's coming on and he's one of the EMTs. Uh, he'll be working as also an FTO, which is a field training officer. And he's done that before uh, previously. Where do you do that? Uh, for care and for Midwest as well. He's, uh, he's very detail oriented and we all know Damien. So now I have a question. Yeah, and said. it's a process question. That's correct. Typically when we hire people, we put it like the sheriff has, you know, they want to hire deputy sheriff. Right. So we probably need to do that on our agenda, don't we? It is on the agenda. It's best practice to have it consistent. Because we don't have his name on here. Where is it? I, it is not I, on the agenda, but it is on. Um, but is this available to the public? Because it's important for our agenda. I thought that and it's a process. I put that on there. And I apologize. Um, well, this is a conditional offer as well. Is it, this, it is conditional? It is conditional based upon him. Of, no, nobody gets preferential treatment. Uh, they all have to pass certain things. And so it is conditional. And I'd like to, you know, I'd like to start him on September 1st. Well, can we put this on next week so we can do it? Consistent with everybody else. Yeah, I just don't want it to be a procedural issue. Okay. So that was still, okay, that wouldn't affect your timeline of September first. No, it would not. No, no. I don't want which to is a Friday. September first is oh this year. Next week will be next year will be something else. Right, Saturday. Okay. Next week. You sure? Awesome. Well. Not excuse me, you're so big. That's correct. <laughs> um, yeah, just put a resolution back on the thing, and we'll put it on next week's agenda. I would. Yes, I have that was, It's my first time. <laughs> right, and that's. It's a process guess, thing, but typically when we hire people, we put their name on. That way, if anybody from the public had some input, they would know. No, agree. Or yeah. if they wanted to come. Right. Yes. What kind of classes is he going to be teaching? Hey, the EVOC, and he's going to be helping out with uh, various of the training for helping out with the protocol, especially for the EMTs, because uh, EMTs have to take the protocol test for what they're responsible for. So he'll be in control of that and that with uh, their protocol of their and setting up the EVOC course as well. So also setting up this conversation. EVOC is the emergency vehicle operation course. Okay. And uh I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, no, I'm just curious. I sound like that. I reached out, you know, I reached out to Jacob and there's no there's no standard. There's no guidance for that it's either you can take the um the online course you know which gives people the knowledge but i believe it needs to be followed up with the practical as well to demonstrate their skills so 
what we want to do is we want to do the knowledge base, which they can do online at their leisure. Three hour is a three hour course. And then follow that up with the practical, which we will do on the three day walk train. I'm sure, we have an ambulance where they can train. Yes. And we are working with, I uh, believe it was Lockbridge with, with their oh, ambulance. Nice. We'll, we'll, we'll have an ambulance. And I talked with, with Bart about that as well. And, and setting up a course, he's going to help with the cone and, and things like that. So, um, it's, it's coming together and we're going to um, set up a great orientation to make sure that, you know, they go in stages yeah. uh, and the medical director feels confident and uh, with their skills. And so, that's important. so now my question three. Yes. You're going to have all this stuff back on an applicant for next week, right? All this. Okay, no checks. That's correct. All back on checks. Yes. Okay. Uh, all 17. I'm, you yes. know, I was just thinking this, this first one since it's the first one. Yes, absolutely. It, it'll be done. So, process wise, again, is there a, a letter, offer letter of employment or anything? Has he worked with your office on that? Um, I don't think we have like a stock offer letter if you want. No, I actually reached out to Jack okay. and uh, he looked at the offer and, and, oh. and he blessed off on that. Okay, and, good. Uh, but I can get the email for you uh, that basic question. So just so I'm clear on this, uh, because this is, this is, I don't know what the technical term is, John, to help me out here. This is a conditional offer that you're making. This isn't a, right. okay. So you make this conditional office offer, and part of it is conditioned upon obviously they pass the pre employment physicals, they do all of those things, the background check, everything that has to be done to qualify to be hired. And of course, the individual has to, ex has to accept the offer as well. So We're not actually, what I'm saying is it's a conditional offer, so we're not actually hiring this individual until all of these other things are complete. So it would okay. come back. Can I just ask like a process question? Why would we do a conditional offer and not just an offer? Well, it, it's based on, they got to pass the background, they sure. got to pass everything at the hospital and, and the medical worker has to bust off. So if I can give you a hypothetical, so I, I make an offer to Shelly. Correct. The Shelly is working at Acme Ambulance Company. Okay. So if we hire Shelly and then she doesn't meet all the pre-employment requirements and she's already given notice to her employer thinking that she's got a job, I'm just wanting to make sure that these folks understand that there is a pre-employment requirement before we actually sign on a dotted line and before she goes and makes a commitment to tell her current employer that, hey, I, I'm, I'm going to become a trapeze artist. I know. As, long, as long as that's spelled out in the offer that it's conditional, yeah. right, that, that's that, how the that's other correct. person... Yes. Can't, we we right. can't be held responsible if they tell their boss to quit and then suddenly it comes back, they've got, you know, so I, I guess what I thought we would be doing, whether it's next week or whatever, we have the name on the agenda, and that's all I'm fine. I don't have a problem with that, is that we're extending a conditional offer predicated upon meeting certain criteria. Once that criteria is met, do we have to bring them back again or? No, okay. I don't think you would have to. But Chauncey then just had a question: Why do a conditional offer? Why not wait till then? If it streamlines our process, that I guess that makes sense. It just kind of it does a two-step, and we we could have a one-step, right? Correct. And it, it's just saying that we are interested in you, but it's predicated on you being the standard. Well, I, we don't I, want to. See, I don't see any problems with checking folks out because we do two things. Yeah. Shelly doesn't quit her job. Right. We don't embarrass Shelly mm -hmm. by right. talking about her in public. Correct. Um, and I don't want to jeopardize anybody's uh, So I think maybe positions. I don't want to see a conditional offer. We're ready to offer, you're ready to offer. Okay. So okay, so then the secondary question to that is 
we're going to go ahead then and go through all the expense of making sure that this, in, in other words, we're going to pay for the physicals and, and all of the things that we, that we have to do uh, and then make an offer after the fact, or are we going to offer them conditionally based upon passing all those things? So then, in other words, so I'm going to say, Susie, I'm going to make an offer to you. And if you pass all of the, the pre-employment requirements, then you'll start on September 1st. That's a job offer, and I'm okay with that. And then we're going to go through the expense of, of, of doing all of that. We're going to go through that expense anyway. Right. But what I'm saying is, is that then we kind of sort of lock that person in. In other words, we've gotten a commitment from them that they're going to accept the position if they pass all these things. A conditional offer might incentivize them to actually go do the physical and stuff like right. that, which right. if, it's not, right. if I don't have an offer in hand, maybe the way wants to say something so if you're making them a conditional offer, you're telling them what you're going to pay them and what their benefits are. Correct. Right. Should they choose to come to work for you? And based on that, they make their decision if they're going to go through the test. If they pass the test, we're good to go. Then then the offer becomes automatic. Would to me it would automatically yeah. be it was conditional. You said you met the conditions. You met the conditions, therefore the offer is complete. So they're you're kind of making it more complicated than it needs. Well, no, I agree with your assessment. All I was saying was is that that we have to do these things, A, because it's in our handbook, one, pre-employment physicals mm -hmm. and stuff. Plus, as you indicated, Susie, you know, the, the background checks and the, and then and then we also know that the billing company is going to do background checks on, on everybody right. as well. But all that being said, I just want to make sure that if we do it this way, which I'm perfectly fine with doing it this way, if they pass all of that stuff, they are an employee. They don't need a second offer from us. Right. That's, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. That's the test. I think it only Ready protects to to us and them. Right. You know, because like I said before, we only can do it right the first time. Yes, sir. But do they want their name out in public if they still have a job? And then they don't pass your physical. Or do you need what no, they do not? What I was trying to say. So we make because it. You know, let's say we got an app from the app. Well, I think they're talking about whether it goes on name on the agenda or not for a conditional offer. By so still in the minutes, that right. published paper. Practically speaking, it's hard to get hired by the government secretly. Mm -hmm. Not very many people look at the minutes. I, I think I might be maybe one of the only ones. I know somebody from Martinsburg that does. <clears throat> What's her name? I bet you know. <laughs> <laughs> Something else. Sir. Well, you guys interviewed me completely and I don't know so they can tell. We had an offer agreed upon. And, what, it, and then what, we brought it here and proved it. And yeah. it wasn't that. Yeah, it wasn't that difficult. It so was my assumption is that this offer trail. has been agreed to by the person that you've offered it to. You're asking Once for us to, to approve it as well. That's correct. Yes. And all this stuff's already been done on that person. No, that's why it's a condition. No, I ask him. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, not yet. They still need to pass. We sure, need to, sure. But they need to know that, hey, we're interested in you. We want to bring you on sure. board. I'm pretty sure they know that. And predicated on passing all of this. Sure. So, so um, we, we've tabled this until next week. Okay. Yes. All right. What do we want to, just for the record, what do we want to see next week? You just said you weren't done with all the checks. Well, on on this individual yeah. that we had talked about. Yeah. Now, the other individuals, those haven't started yet. Yeah. I, I was we, just talking about the, the individual that was on there. For okay. Today. The individual that we were talking about yeah. will be okay. for, for next okay. week. It, it might be smart to clarify the process for the 17 others mm -hmm. so that if, um, yes. if they want to do their application or their interview anonymously, how do we facilitate that? Obviously, you know, you don't want to tell your new boss, your current boss, you're interested in new employment. It's going to be difficult, but I don't know that it's possible. Well, I guess I look at it this way. If we follow what Susie just said, they're all going to have all their background checks and all their physicals in place before you're going to hire them anyway. And at that point, yeah. I'm and not we, sure how you're going to do And we're getting close that. enough. Like right now, I've, 
you're getting close enough that they'll have two weeks probably to give their notice mm -hmm. right, before they start. So everybody's going to know anyway. One thing we could do is do conditional offers to individuals and not list their names. And then before we actually hire them, have a, have a full block, you know, uh, put it on the agenda to hire these 17 individuals once they pass their, their tests. That, that's something that would protect their anonymity until they're actually until they're they're able actually, to be hired. Okay. So then what you're going to have to do then is you're going to have to deal with the hospital because you're going to have a whole slew that you're going to have yes backed up and i don't know what their schedule right is and 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 that's you know that could be problematic or uh hopefully you know we can get get it streamlined and i can get like a block of you know five if you will mm -hmm. um and then of course their schedules as well the individuals and, and that that's correct so by next week know, you'll have more information i i will yes ma'am and uh I get this in the yeah. Later, so. so I think we're taking forward progress. We are steps a little. We are. We're moving forward. That's right. and that's all that matters. Yeah. So. Okay. Moving on to the next thing. Discuss and consider security locks and door handles for 1900 West Burlington. Lee, you probably put that on there. No, I did not. I then I told Abby to put it on there. Two doors. Actually, probably got more than two doors. We want to make sure everything's secure. At one point, we talked about cards. We could just swipe them. But uh, I think that would be a good yeah. idea, especially being open twenty four seven. Yeah. And you know, say for instance, our crews go out on number one, or both crews go out on number one. Yeah. When they come back, I know the back door currently has has a cipher lock. Mm -hmm. um, that could be used, right? Um, sure. The front doors, um, I think it should be. I, th I think the badge is a good idea. Um, I think they Just told us secure. on Friday that if we want to do this, we better tell them now. Okay. Um, you know, as far as the, the flash card. I, th I think that'd be great. Because so both doors are just the front door. I think we had to do them for both doors. But okay. We've talked with Brett about doing this for the whole county, and he was waiting to write a grant on it. But this is the time when we probably need to do right. it. But no, I, mm -hmm. I, I think. So would you use the same card for both doors? Yeah, yeah you'd have the same. Question. Yeah. Won't you also have a hand door on the garage? Is that what the, I heard in the walkthrough? The garage doors will be to the exterior, and then there's an interior from me. And there is a door. There's one side. door to door that goes. East. Yeah. Right. Well, there's an east door, and then there's a door that goes from by Brian's office That's to correct. the the do bay. You, do you remember we had hand door in the garage on the east side on the outside yes. to the end of the garage? So you'll have three doors. That that inside door where where the garage is probably doesn't need to be I wouldn't badge that. Just gonna, what she's saying is that if you're standing on the east side of the garage door bays on the north side of the, the furthest, the northernmost bay, okay. just north of that, there will be a walkthrough door. Yes. So that would be your third door. And then okay. there's an east door coming out of the bank building, mm -hmm. and then the front doors. And they constructed that ramp to go down. But I'm just thinking about as you have staff turnover, because if you if you have all the doors the same. That's a simple process. You simply change the key card. Otherwise, how many keys are you going to have to track? Well, to um, get systems. You know, my well, experience. I, I agree. I'm just saying. It seems right. Like keep it simple. Well, you know, like in the computer, if there is a staff turnover, we just simply go in there and, and deactivate. Right. I All think right. it's the simplest, cleanest way to do it. They like just to tell them them now, so right. they can. Okay. But. Talk to Brett first because he has a way to make these cards so we oh, don't well. have to go out and buy anything oh, well. as far as that goes. But we would have to let but we'll have Steve to buy Thornton know we're going to do this so right. they can have the 
Because it's like the infrastructure they for had it. To put the infrastructure yeah, in yeah, on the North yeah. Shore, so in the future we can yeah, do it. Okay. Yes, that's true. But I'm just saying, Brett needs to be in the loop on all this. Of course he does. Yes. Uh, uh, does I'm PCS need to be in the loop on too. Yeah, well, PCS needs to be called as of the water through on Friday. Yeah. You ask the questions for them. Okay. You just need to make sure your system, wherever you go with, will scan the salinated parts and yes. then your computer program with that scanning system right. will be have the ability to deactivate that. Because I can deactivate the card itself, but right. that's not going to deactivate it in your scanning system. Correct. Yeah. Okay. We'll so have to, to, so for, I make cards. Yes, I know. And, and so for a dummy like me, just explain what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> so the down. cards, it'll be card, it's this. Okay. So one of these cards. You can scan it, it has a barcode on it, so you can scan the barcode, get into your building, but you need to have a computer system that's set up with your barcode reader Correct. on your building Okay. that you can go in and deactivate whatever the barcode is on this. Because yeah. I can deactivate this card in my system, but that doesn't mean, I mean, they could still have their card if they don't turn it into you. Right. Yeah, right. And we so until still... you deactivate it in, in a system. computer system that runs your scanner, it would still work, you even know, if I deactivate the car. Do you know what kind of system you have? It's a salamander system. Right. Okay. So, Shelly, yes. so if we do this countywide, do we have one computer that it does this for the whole county, or does every building have to have their own? We have one printer in the county. Technically, we can assign and get a few other people to go in and enter people in there. So, we okay. right now, because it seems like do we don't want to buy any more hardware than we have to in software right but we need to plan this now and think it through yeah. so that as far as the cards go that's not an issue because we right. have a system so. right and it's it's bright system that i have it because we use it the most so. yeah okay. okay so basically you need to let steve thornton know we're doing we want to do this you need to also talk to brett as well and keep us in the loop because we need to do this at a county level. We just right. aren't ready to until we hopefully get some grant money to do this. Yeah, I think this will be our initial test project. Yeah. Right. And it, it's good because, you know, all of our employees will have um, credentials such as what, what Shelly's wearing. So just to explain this a little bit, these yeah. are like nationwide. So like right. if you are on a disaster, you, they can scan this barcode. And then it tracks your time. So if we have a human disaster, we can print off the spreadsheet after everybody's scanned in, and then it'll automatically give it the times. So I know like it takes forever to get FEMA reimbursement, mm -hmm. but one of the hurricanes, Florida used this system, and within a month they had their reimbursement. So I mean, it thank you for that. that yeah, thank you for that. Thanks. Yep. See, I knew you yeah. So does anybody want to make a motion? As far as what? The cards. Sure, I'll move that we do the card system oh, for the doors at 1900 West Burlington in the context of it's the first step in Buffalo County. What she said, I'll second. <laughs> oh, God, perfect. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. You know, I think that's great. I think it'll make it much easier for those folks. You know, I know when we bought First National Bank out there, we still have a giant box of keys of which we don't know which one goes to anywhere. Yeah. So this really simplifies the process. Well, and now that some of the counters are gone, it's a few keys could be gone too. Yeah, they're all going to be gone soon. Anyway, did we vote on that? Did we, we vote on that? that? No, I don't think we did. All those in favor, signify by saying no. I just think we did. Motion passed. So I assume we did. You never know with us. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's, now, discuss and consider changes to the ambulance purchase. I do have a truck we could use, but then go ahead. Okay. Well, I got a call. I don't know what day I talked to you, but I think it was Friday. We talked. I got a call from Kevin Pipeline. And, uh, I don't pretend to understand all of the, the, but evidently Ford dropped a whole bunch of chassis on Lifeline. They're the ones that do the boxes and the refurbs and, and, and whatnot. And um, 
So the, the repurt box that we were going to get, they were going to put in a brand new electrical system. So what that um, amounts to is they would be touch screen and it would push its way into next year sometime before we would, would get the ambulance and be available. And he said he could use the existing system and he can do it in his um, shop. Uh, and they have the parts and everything. It would be under warranty. And basically what it would be is the push button system that's already in it. And it's about $10,000 less. Okay. And we're looking at November or December of this year. Is there any downside to it? It's an older electrical system in terms of it's, you know, you probably got three or four years uh, parts availability, I guess you'd say. He said he's got the parts of stuff in stock. He said, but the other side of that is, is that when we start looking at ambulances and things, you know, we start getting three and four years out. Sure. Um, so, but I told him I could not unilaterally make that decision, but I really didn't think that there was much option in our regard. I mean, we can say, no, we want the new one. Uh, everything will still be under warranty. The box will still be under warranty. Obviously, it's a brand new chassis. It'll be under warranty. Um, and he's saying it's looking like November or December of this year. Of this year if and we go that you route. You and I talked the other day. What's the good news? Yeah. You know, the, the good news is, is that we still get a brand new truck and, and, a, and a box with the, everything's new in it. With the And when I say the electrical system, I don't want the public to think that we're shortchanging on the electrical system. What we're talking about is having a push button system as opposed to a touch screen. Mm -hmm. And you said the other day, we'll save, save $10,000 right, roughly, which is good. Yeah. Um, and is there any guarantee it's going to be here this year? He said November or December. That's what he told me. Um, and when I said to him, when he said next year on the new one, I said, so what's next year? Mid-January, January 31st? He, he just kind of said, yeah. yeah. So we're probably looking at June with all the ones that they had to do. Which brings me to another point where we have this discussion later. Um, uh, I've not talked to, to Brian about it, but as Dee's well aware of, one of our rigs is a 2016. And so I think once we get our feet wet and we get things underneath us and get into next year and, and whatnot, because we're probably looking at a minimum of 18 months before we can get another rig. Um, that was some of the problems that you're well aware of that we were facing this time around. Well, I just became aware of a possible grant we could use at that okay. time. And that grant window is March. So if we could get that on our radar, exactly. we do that before March. I'm just saying that we need to probably start the process of replacing that 2016 now because it's going to be a year, year and a half minimum before we... we now, get if we need a backup one sooner than later, I know that when I was doing my little research a few months ago, Henry County has an old one. It's not one you're going to want to use as your first ambulance. Right. But if we need a backup one, just... To I, I, you might want to talk to them. I think that would be um, an excellent idea, whether it be from there. And I don't think it's, I mean, of course, me, I always ask for a ballpark price, which I'll right. tell you, but it wasn't significant. But yet, you know, to my knowledge and hers, nothing was wrong with it. It was just they didn't need it anymore. And it's taken up space. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, that you know, with Lee, hearing from the uh, ambulance people about being delayed I was mm -hmm. I want to uh, look at maybe possibly leasing an ambulance um, until that one comes in I, I think it's very important to have a backup in case something goes wrong with one of the units so yeah just in case and but you I, might want to talk to them and see about that and if it's I will yes, go look at it see if it's feasible or do yes ma'am um, um so back to this other thing uh i need the board's approval to call kevin 
Okay, so to yeah, this if that's what the board wants. All right, we got discussed and considered. So yeah. yes, I'll make a motion that we modify our purchase agreement to go with this second thing. existing system. I'm not going to say older right. existing system. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And just for the public that may be listening. The wire and everything is going to be identical as to what it, what we're doing is what we're we're leaving in place the push button system as opposed to replacing it with a touch screen. Okay. And there's an ambulance three legged stool meeting next Tuesday at eight. And I just good. Got, While you're there, you got my text. I just got the agenda. Hang on. But Brian, Tuesday, it might be helpful for you to come because yes, the agenda be is. Transfer discussion, trucks, equipment, supplies. What time is that? Yeah, that Eight. The transfers was with, with care? No, the, well, yeah, but okay. it's through the three legged stool. Oh, okay. And that's next Tuesday, the 22nd. I think it's two, two. So. Oh, I have two doctors. Oh, you said the 22nd. So um, what did you say? Did you get my text? On what? On the, on the number 52 ambulance. There still has not been anything done on the refrigerator. So uh, maybe if you could bring okay. that Okay, no, I guess I didn't see that. Okay. Thank you, Lee. Yep. So the next item on the agenda is to discuss and consider the final invoice for CCI. Uh, number eight first. Discuss and consider lost resolution. Which I have been informed that lost is spelled with two S's. I went through school all those years and thought it was only spelled with one. Well, well you know, it's government related. That's, they don't. that's true, but. It's probably ran your election. With I two see, S's. okay. So I don't know whether you guys received this or not. I received this in an email and it was a conversation that I'd had multiple times with Senator Dickey uh, to my, I'm not sure what the word is I want to use, but I, it, it was not what I would consider a fruitful conversation. The legislature, this last legislative session was considering taking away our local option sales tax and they would determine what it could be used for. And part of those funds that would be paid in would go to this uh, conservation amendment that was passed about 10 years ago, about three eighths of a cent. And uh, when you're talking about a penny and you're talking three eighths of a cent, you're talking almost half of your local option sales tax. I'm sure Farm Bureau was probably involved in this as well. What I would like the board's permission to do is to ask Elizabeth and Lord Chauncey to draw up a resolution that we also could send to the state, much like what you did regarding the uh, eminent domain issue, as and use Tama counties as a as a guideline, because I think the legislature needs to keep their hands off of. As I said to Senator Dickey, what part of local don't you understand? It's a local option sales tax and, and the voters of the county should have the right to determine the use of those funds and not the state of Iowa. Right. The last sentence says that. What? The last sentence says that. Does it? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, first off, I think the state taking it to begin with is illegal. I had this conversation years ago with the late, um, Kurt Hansen, and he was in total agreement when they tried to do this once before. And only it was with the silo tax, if you remember, Joe. Yeah. Um, and again, that was a voter approved use. And I don't believe that the state has the authority to change the will of the voter on what they determined to use the sales tax for. <clears throat> so if the board is agreeable, I would reach out to Elizabeth to see about it getting a resolution drawn up that we can pass and send on the, the state. I know it's like spitting in the land, Susie, but. No, essentially you want to do what Tame did yes. and we'll vote out next week. 
the car whenever she gets it done. Yeah. Just you know, to get up there before the next <laughs> session starts. Um, I just think that you know, you've been through this, we've been through this last year with the sales tax or the property tax and stuff, and they're sniffing around this. And I don't expect us to operate. Well, I do know the answer. I want us to regionalize and change everything. It's going to make sense. And we'll look at it this way. And I'm not saying that we will go out to the voters and ask for a change, but I look at it this way. If the state of Iowa takes 50% of our property sales tax, you know, sales tax, and applies it towards that three eighths of a cent. And, and Senator Nicky told me, he said, well, they said, you know, we want the state to remain competitive, so we don't want to raise our sales tax. Well, no, but you're going to take ours uh, and, and use it. To so my way of thinking on the, the three eighths of a cent, your 80 cents of every dollar on property tax review, because 20 cents goes to bridge and culverts, now we're going to lose three eighths of that cent to conservation, and that's going to reduce what you're going to get in, in property tax relief really? because you're only going to have about 50 percent to deal with, as well as the bridge of culverts. So, how much money are we talking about? about no, I just well, we generate what, about 700,000, 750,000 a year in property tax, 80 percent of which goes, or I keep saying property tax, sales tax, 80 percent of which goes to. Property tax relief and twenty percent to bridge calls, mm -hmm. and you know, and obviously that can fluctuate depending upon the sales tax. But <clears throat> if you look at what we've done in the last year or so, if you're looking at six hundred thousand dollars of property tax relief, we cut taxes by three hundred thousand, and. Um, There was another 700,000, 750,000 that you cut when the state took over. Mental health. So you figure that the county, Jefferson County, has incorporated about $1.3 million in property tax relief. And then for the state to come along and change that dynamic without the permission of the voters, I don't think it's right. No, without, yeah. Okay. Well, with your permission, I would like to pursue that. Yeah, that works for me. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Susie. So now, um, we, you talked about that again. Thank you. And you've talked about trying to find a replacement for ECI. Sorry. Who? Mm -hmm. Oh, ECI. ECI. The meeting. Early oh, childhood. yeah, yeah. And you agreed. No, did not. <laughs> you want a replacement? What, for early childhood? I was just bored to tears in that mm -hmm. meeting. It's good for him. I, I'm okay till we get down to talking about the diaper program and no, then it's, know, it's time to bail. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, discussing it later, let's. Final invoice for CCI. It's for the work that was done in the basement. I think we're down to a little over $5,000. I personally feel we just need to pay it. This is an old building. Nothing yep. is going to be totally perfect. We just need to put Good. this to bed. Yeah. It's been eight months. Except it'd be nice if they would get that one uh, ladies' restroom stall operation. I'd like to have her $200,000 back. Find somebody that knows what the hell they're doing, but it's like you said, Susie, it's, it's, it's done. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would make a motion to approve the final invoice for CCI. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. The time is just a second. 10 13, we finally concluded that whole deal. Yeah, but I have a lot of committee reports. I know I'm talking about what we just voted on. <laughs> So, committee reports. I have a question first. So, when did this new agenda come out? Did we get this in the email on Friday? Uh, roughly 3 30 ish. Okay. She's got some asterisks there. In the oh, yeah, yeah. Did change. you email us out? Yes. Okay, good. Um, come on. 
So last week, I attended a workforce meeting through Zoom. Nothing much is going on besides it. the Iowa workforce doesn't have much money anywhere but here in Burlington. And of course, Des Moines. Um, we did, there is a new governor, the governor of Iowa has released a significant amount of uh, dollars so people can get trained to be a CDL driver. And I guess the applications for that end um, in September. So everybody, if they want to do that, they better hurry up. Not sure the public knows about it yet, but better hurry up. Better Contact Iowa Workforce. They might know what's going on. Pathfinders is doing the financial part. You know. mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is uh, we all went to the 1900 West Burlington on Friday to look at the progress. I think it was significant. In addition to that, on um, yesterday, they yanked that window out, Abby. Nice. We put a board up, so hopefully that new window will be coming in. It's, it's been making a lot of progress. Yeah. There's going to be a contractor starting building the ambulance part. This yeah, we're doing a great job out there. I was impressed. Who's the builder? There he is. Dan. Oh, okay. For the, that one part. There's a lot. Joe, so there's a lot of folks, you know. He's Managing the project, well, yeah, Steve. Just... Well, I've been checking on the outside every day on the town. I go past, yes. see the progress. Of the outside. It was impressive as well. We had, you know, quite the rain on Friday morning, and we were out there just yeah. before noon on Friday, and there was no standing water on that new garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, the, the little pit they have with the pipe down low, it, it was almost empty. You know, so it was. It's. I'm very impressed. Also impressed how clean they're keeping the place. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But there, there's a lot of people helping. You know. Yeah. And uh, what today's August the fifteenth. Brian mentioned they'd like to get people there on August or September eighteenth. They might be able to do that. At least inside. Yeah, and if I, I, there might they might need some training time, so they might come here to do their training. Which we'll have to figure out because that's the time frame that the auditors are here. Yeah, yeah. Are they in here? That's where we were gonna put them because normally we put them down in yeah. down in the conference mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. they're and they're probably gonna the need the 14th, the 15th, and the 16th for the training. Okay, the auditors are here the 12th and 13th. Yeah, they're, they're, they're talking, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. So they'll need the 14th, 15th, and 16th. Now the 16th is a Saturday, but that's all been scheduled. I thought Brian said that would be the 18th. The start the Potentially, 18th. yes, if we can't get them out there, yeah. Yeah. I guess I was under the impression through Brian. That well, this is that training for the building company. Right. But I figure if they're not hired yet, they can't start till the 18th. Well. This so it's I, it's it's yeah. a work in progress. We'll right. have to yeah. see. This the billing company's schedule, not not ours, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Anybody, any yeah. any other committees? Um, opioid settlement funds. We now have one hundred twelve thousand five hundred seventy-one dollars and twelve cents. That's some more information, which I send copy Shannon and Elizabeth on everything related to that after. Um, probably mid September, I'm going to start getting some community folks together. I've already sent Elizabeth some information to take to ACT in September on that. At Pathfinders, they're rocking and rolling, doing a lot of work. Said uh, Mike Nag is going to be down in Bloomfield, Davis County, looking at a project. I think it's September 7th. Um, they are Historic Hills, by the way, they do some work with that. And there's actually an app on Spotify that you can drive the byway and listen to the tour, audio tour on that. Um, 
AML, the abandoned mine reclamation, lots is going on with that. What and, counties is that happening now? Uh, those are usually in Marion County and sometimes Davis had an old one. No, that's a WCAP. Right now it's mostly Marion and Nahaska. Um, and then a new project, a new contract with IDOLS. Well, and they're in planning stages, meeting with them in NRCS about helping to train workforce representatives. If we can use the RCPP program to help train people for as conservation engineers and technicians. So a lot of good things going on there. Um, a Pathfinder's position uh, was awarded a technical grant with a lower skunk watershed coordinator position. They've had a revolving door in that position. So hopefully this will stabilize that and that affects those people on the east side of the county as in the lower skunk. We have a couple of partial fields in that. Um, so yeah, lots going on there. And, and something that I hope we can look forward to. It was interesting. I, you know, we've done a lot of work on the, the water trails and that, a lot of that's in Davis and Van Buren County, but it's kind of like, I called Ashley up one day and said, well, why can't we rent canoes or kayaks? And she said, you know, somebody in Van Buren County had asked about that. So they're going to work on to see if we could actually get something going there. So stay yeah, tuned. Because yeah, it's kind of like if you have a water trail, we got to be able to yeah. open that up to people, the public, not just people that own their own. On the north side of Kilo there, as you're going in on the yeah. right hand side. And then uh, mental health yeah. had a Mental Health Agency of Southeast Iowa, formerly SEAL. It's now 12 counties, as you know. There's five supervisors on it. Now there is a sheriff, and that sheriff is going to be the Appanoose County Sheriff Anderson, and there's now a judge on it, and that is Joshua Schur from Des Moines County. And that's along with an adult advisory, which is Tracy Loptap, and then Child Advisory and Education. So that board is totally changing composition as a legislature. Mm -hmm. Can you give me that acronym again? Uh, M-H-A-S-E-I-A, -A, Mental Health Agency of Southeast Iowa. Next Monday at our meeting, I've asked the head of the mobile crisis response team to come educate us in the community about that because that is available now. So if you have somebody that you know as a mental health, they'll go anywhere, hospital. She came and talked to me the other day. Good, good. And then you can dial 988 or you know traditionally 911 and do that. But we'll learn more about that next Monday. And some uh, just information, the 988, 988 call line's been in place a year now and the states had 36,000 calls past year stayed right on that. And that is it. So I got a question regarding the mental health region. Yeah. Um, in the past, I know that the region is contracted with Optimate for yes, services. Yes, that's stuff. still true. Okay, can you tell me, are they contracted or uh, involved in any way with the funding of Jackson Point through Optimate? I don't know, Tracy the tech might know that. Okay. They're, 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 I don't think they are directly. I'm, I'm assuming they would provide services for some of the residents. Right. I just, the only reason I asked is because we're just I know. trying to figure out. So I just want to make sure all the players, or I had an idea of who all the players were besides us. Yeah, I had uh, left a message for John Morris. Can yeah. you come and talk well, to us about that? She used to be on that. Yeah, and well, and, 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 and Dick was on the start, but what we've determined uh, through a minutes of a meeting that we found and stuff that you found mm -hmm. actually, among other things, with Mike um, Brown determined a couple months ago, we are not a player in this, right. the county, but it's so convoluted that I don't know what, you know, we want to make sure the residents are taken care of, which I know that some of them are clients of Optima. Right. So anyway, uh, the only thing I had was, besides what Susie already enumerated, was uh, regional utility service systems. Uh, still dealing with um, 
Ollie, um, and they're working on it. I mean, they, they, and so is Deke from Kika County Supervisor. Uh, they're into us for about $12,000. And uh, of course, part of that is, is, is current rate. But the thing that concerns me, and I've expressed this, and we're, and we're watching it pretty close, but having gone through the Mount Union experience, um, this is beginning to smell an awful lot like that. Mm -hmm. And no, so you really gave that before. Uh -huh. What's changed? Well, nothing. That's my okay. concern is, is that um, when I got on the Regional Utility Service Systems Board way back after Steve uh, re retired, um, and I assumed his role, I walked into that, we were already $13,000 in the hole. And it was just going downhill very quickly. We spent fortunes on attorneys. It was, you know, and eventually the community unincorporated in Henry County took it over. Um, I'm hoping that we can prevent that process this time. And, and all of the city, the city council members of all it um, are working very closely with us, but you can't get blood out of a turnip either. And so just trying to figure out how to, to make it all work without it going, it could go south pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So it just and once it gets so high what ends up happening uh, is like so susie's paying her bill but no, i'm not, no, not no. but i'm not and eventually because the way the system's set up and because it's a government funded sewer system there's loan payments and reserve loan funds and oem funds and and and, and maintenance funds and so of the $50 you pay, so much goes to the loan payment, so much goes into the reserve fund. You know this, okay? Sarah, or you did when you were in all it. And so the point is, when I don't pay, hers has to go up because those costs don't go down. And we saw the rate go exactly. up times. And eventually it got to $150 a month in Mount Union because half of Mount Union wasn't paid. Part of that was because of the mayor and the city council and the, and, the, and the choices that they made. But all that being said, eventually it gets so high that those that are paying can't pay. And it's, it's like a dog chasing his tail and it only gets worse. And if we can't, and there is a contract that requires the city of Austin <coughs> to indemnify Russ same contract that we live under here in Jefferson County. So for example, in Lindy or East Pleasant Plain, those systems that aren't being paid for, we pay and then we put it on those folks' as property tax and collect it at that time. The city of Ollie is working toward that, but they really don't have a good system in place. So we're just, we're just continually pushing to try and get it moving forward. It's tough. I mean, these folks for years and years and years, they had septic systems and they didn't make any sewer payments. Mm -hmm. And then while there's a huge advantage to having it in place, you don't have to do the time of transfer inspections. Mm -hmm. We maintain it all, but there's still that monthly fee that they never had before. Sure. Right. To be clear, this isn't in Jefferson County. No, no, it is not. <laughs> um, and we're working on it, but it's it's that one sure. red flag sure. or red line or whatever. Sure. So the next item is to allow claims and approve reports after we've looked at them. And I'm pretty sure I did. did. You did? Yeah. I signed them yesterday. We're just waiting on D. Yeah. And she'll give the bottom line, right? Mm -hmm. I will move to What did you see? Correct. Mm -hmm. I'll still revisit it. We're back. Oh, okay. How did it nasty? You mean him themselves? We should have waited. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Where is it? Yes, can be. M I C K E Y M O U S E. Give us some time. I do. I 
do. With pepper logs? No, I wish. <laughs> That'd be fun. Terrible but fun. After the meeting, I'll tell you a story about football guys. And I'm sure they want to talk. So you say you were at that uh, Woodstock concert in Southwest part of the county? No. Oh. No, not, not really my style. Because I heard me has. Do you want to look at this? Oh, no, I've already still looked at it. Um, I will make a motion to approve the claims and report, and the grand total is $215,014.90. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I would look and see my Facebook page and several of the promoters and stuff. No, are we joining? Yeah, we're going on right to it. Most of us join us. And uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, you need to change, before we adjourn, you, oh, you need to change the date on that. Today in most countries is the 15th. I did yesterday on the 14th. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So, I mean, I could change. Motion to adjourn. We have a road tour on our schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. adjourn. So how do I get that? So that means somebody said that. All right. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Thank you very much. Did you do a patiently road tour? Quite a job keeping on task, don't you?